Joey Molino, came of age in an era where the mafia in Philadelphia was decimated, taking full advantage of the power vacuum to assume control of the family. And in order to reach the underworld, Molino wasn't afraid to be downright brazen. Philadelphia residents were long used to their local mobsters killing each other left and right, but everyone was still shocked on August 31, 1993, when a shooting orchestrated by Molino took place between mobsters during morning rush hour traffic on the busy Schoolkill Expressway. And this was just one episode in the all-out mob war that put Joey Molino at the top of the Philadelphia family. From shootings to openly courting the press, Joey Molino was always brash and never willing to play by the rules. This is the wild story of Joey Molino's rise and fall. Molino was born into a mob household on March 13, 1962, with his father, once a deputy for a notoriously violent boss, and his uncle, a capo in the 1980s. Entering the family business, Molino conducted himself with an air of entitlement, and he picked up his first conviction for an Atlantic City stabbing incident when he was just 20. In 1990, Molino was sentenced to four years for conspiring to steal $350,000 in an armored car robbery, and would make a life-changing pact in prison. In Pennsylvania's McKean Correctional Institution, Molino met Ralph Notale, a long-standing Philadelphia mob associate, serving a 16-year sentence. In the young and charismatic Molino, Notale, nearing 60, recognized a golden opportunity, and the pair started plotting to take over the Philadelphia family from incumbent boss John Stanfer. With Scarfo imprisoned, Stanfer had received the blessing of the New York Mafia Commission to head the family. Molino and the new wave of South Philly mobsters, dubbed Young Turks by the media, believed Stanfer had no place on the Philadelphia throne and that they could do better. Molino's associates and boyhood friends would take on the Stanfer faction for control of the family, and if they succeeded, Natale would be the boss with Molino as his deputy. On January 29, 1992, Molino's faction struck first with the killing of Felix Bocchino, before Molino was even paroled in April of that year. Meanwhile Stanford, while recognizing the tenuous situation, sought to appease Molino by inducting them into the family in September 1992. Becoming a made man at the age of 30 didn't instill loyalty in Molino. Instead, the promotion gave him the prestige he needed to act even more boldly and soon bullets were flying again in the city of brotherly love. On August 5, 1993, Molino survived a assassination attempt, taking four bullets in the leg on a South Philadelphia street corner. On August 31, 1993, Molino's faction retaliated with their own infamous shooting on Stanford and his son, while they were driving on the Schoolkill Expressway, in Philadelphia rush hour traffic. Stanford escaped uninjured and his son survived a shot to the jaw. The tit-for-tat killings continued, with Molino escaping death, as a remote-controlled bomb under his car failed to go off several times. In November 1993, Joey Molino was sent back to prison for a year for parole violations, providing temporary reprieve from the battlefield. Then in 1995, the problem took care of itself when Stanfer was convicted and sentenced to five consecutive life sentences, for directing the bloody campaign against Molino's mob faction. Natale and Molino then took over, with the Philadelphia family having deteriorated into a dysfunctional mess, resembling a street gang, rather than the smooth and sophisticated criminal enterprise of former boss Angelo Bruno's day. Natale's tenure as Philadelphia's boss was less than effective. There were even whispers that Natale, who wasn't even made when he plotted to take over, had paid for his induction into the family. By 1998, Molino, who had happily accepted the deputy position knowing the feds would target Notale, had assumed control, cutting Notale off. Molino had support in the family through the older Joseph Legambi, who was recently out of prison. Legambi, a protege of Molino's father Chucky, had in turn become an uncle figure to Molino, and an important ally. Molino seemed untouchable, or at least believed he was, but by mid-1999, he was indicted in a drug trafficking conspiracy, with the charges later expanded to racketeering and ordering or approving several murders. Ralph Notale had been indicted for financing drug deals the year before and was still bitter over Molino having cut him off, so he became the first American mafia boss to become a government witness, testifying how he and Molino conspired to take over the family in the early 1990s. Molino's ensuing trial was the result of a 10-year investigation that featured an extraordinary pieces of evidence and 50 witnesses. The FBI had hoped Molino would never see the light of day again. 
however, he was eventually acquitted of all three counts of murder. Molino was sentenced to 14 years for racketeering crimes. After 12 years, Molino was released in 2011 and sent to a Florida halfway house for six months followed by supervised release. Then moving to Florida, Molino denied any current involvement in the Philadelphia Mafia, while working in a restaurant bearing his name, from 2014 until it closed in 2016. Molino had to then serve four months for associating with a Philadelphia mob pal, and on August 4, 2016, Molino was one of 46 people arrested in a wide-sweeping RICO indictment, accused of taking part in a massive medical fraud scheme in Florida, as well as illegal gambling. Molino eventually received a two-year sentence, and in October 2019, was granted an early supervised release. When Molino was imprisoned for 12 years, Joe Ligambi had taken over stabilizing the family, with court documents from 2020 confirming Ligambi as Philadelphia's counselor, but most questioning if Molino is still the real boss of the family. As of today, the FBI believes that Joey Molino still runs Philadelphia's crime family from afar, through a series of intermediaries and street bosses. But has he actually gone straight, or is it one big con?